Does that mean we win? Yes, it does. What's going on guys? If you wanna support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. If you're interested in custom playmats and sleeves, visit yourplaymat.com and use code ITRESOLVES10YP for 10% off your entire purchase. Welcome everybody to yet another standard gameplay video. I hope you guys are doing exceptionally well today. I want to remind you, please make sure you subscribe to the channel. Not only is it a great way to support, but we do have a giveaway going on right now until the new set comes out. Streets of New Capenna is going to be coming out uh, towards the end of April, I believe. Uh, first of May or somewhere in those realms. I don't remember the exact day. Uh, we're going to be giving away a draft booster box of the set. So I do want to encourage you. Subscribing is a great way to enter, but there are more. Please go check out the video on our landing page. We also have an article here on our website, itresolvesmtg.com, if you would like to check the details out there. Links for everything are down below, so please do check that out. But guys, let's talk about today's deck. It's Orzhov Clerics. Uh, this is a classic, man. We have had this deck around for goodness. Uh, since probably Zendikar Rising days, if I remember, like during that release. Uh, and this is a pretty stock version of the list, but there are, you know, some some little bits that you can change here and there, uh, and certainly would encourage you to try so on your own. But uh, this is a fairly straightforward version. Uh, we do have the Pyre of Heroes in here, so what this allows us to do is sacrifice a creature, go kind of move up the chain. If you all remember the old Birthing Pod decks, it's very similar. Uh, you can uh, basically, if you sacrifice like a two drop, you can go get a three drop and so on and so forth. The idea to kind of move up the chain, get an aura out if we can, uh, which means every time we sacrifice something or something dies, we get something with lesser value back from the graveyard, which is great because it just resets the chain. We can kind of keep it going. Uh, life gain is obviously a pretty large sub theme with these lists, as you guys probably know. We've got the veteran, we've got the cleric, uh, we have got the righteous Valkyrie. Uh, and plenty more here. Uh, Aura again having lifelink, Soren being able to throw out that little lifelinker. Just tons of options, guys. This is going to be a really fun one. We do have Drana in this version, uh, which is interesting. So whenever you uh, attack with it, defending player chooses a non-legendary creature card into your graveyard. You get to return that to the battlefield with an additional 1-1 counter on it. It's a vampire in addition to its other types. So a lot of recursion built into this version of the list between that, between Agadim's Awakening, uh, and then of course the Aura. We've got a lot of options, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna harp on this too long. We kind of, ooh, excuse me, we kind of know how Orzhov Clerics works at this point, point. Uh, and so I would like to just go ahead and jump into the games. Maybe we can get an extra one in because again, this is hopefully gonna be a pretty fast uh, deck. We'll we'll see. We're gonna do the best we can, guys. So let's jump into it. Let's have some fun today. All right, guys. Here we are for game number one. A bit of an unfortunate hand, although I do think it's one we can try and keep. Uh, we've got two colors of mana here, although. One is untapped, uh, or tapped, excuse me. But I think we give it a shot. We'll see how it goes. Uh, hopefully we can draw just a basic land. And there we go. Problem solving. Uh, I'll go ahead and reveal this one. And uh, yeah, I mean, pretty awesome start. We've got a lot of our two drops that we're going to need here. We've got that cleric that we can get down pretty early. Uh, and then, of course, Righteous Valkyrie to do the same. I am going to expect we are running we're gonna probably run into some heavy control elements out of this deck it looks like a five color deck uh and so it's gonna be something we kind of have to have to do our best to get around here so we'll see what we can do we can exile this um but i don't actually think we need to yet let's do this i'm gonna go ahead and throw that righteous valkyrie out there uh just to gain as much life as we can and then get an attack in and we'll see how this one goes guys uh, as we are kind of getting into this uh, this first game, I do want to encourage everybody, we on Saturday released a new video uh, looking at my collection, a little bit more of a peek behind the curtain, kind of a personal look at what I do and how I collect and things like that. I would love for you guys uh, to be able to kind of see that peek behind the curtain and see what, how I collect, what I collect, those kinds of things. Uh, and so that's kind of why we're doing that. If you are interested and you haven't already seen it, please go watch it. It's a blast. It's a really fun time. It's great to look at some unique cards or just sealed product that we actually get to pick up that we don't always get to. So it's a little bit of a unique experience. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I want to encourage you, if you have any kind of suggestions to better that series, I would love to hear it. I want to make sure that I'm uh, producing content that you guys want to, want to enjoy, you know? 
uh, and hopefully that's something that you you will like. So we'll see. But just a suggestion, just a suggestion. Um, well, I mean, I think <laughs> I mean, we've got some options here. Um, let's see. Monocolored permanent. So it really only hits that. Uh, I think what we're going to do is sacrifice this. Uh, just so we can power things up a little bit here. Uh, the question is, what do we want to get? Um, uh, I think we actually take this. This, uh, importantly gives us a little bit of protection in card draw if stuff starts to die. Uh, which I do think is pretty, pretty plausible here. You know what I mean? Uh, and so I'd like to have that option for us. We can also move this up the chain later on, which will be helpful. Alright. So they do take five and then uh, lose their little sentinel here. That's kind of an interesting one. Um, do we just get the the good game from the opponent? Does that mean we win? Yes, it does. There we go, guys. Game one is down with a win. Heck yes. I love these. Uh, these cleric decks are always pretty pretty fun and pretty good. So let's jump into game two, guys. All right, guys. Here we are for game number two. Now, this is a bit of a reactive hand. However... Uh, it does have some long-term uses. I mean, the Vanishing Verses are kind of nice. I think, though, we have to mulligan that. Uh, I don't love it. I think this is much better. We can throw a Pyre back and then um, actually get this Cleric down turn two, which is certainly going to be the, the goal for us. Uh, that Righteous Valkyrie also going to be great. Land is fine. We do need to get to four land, although I'd like it to, to be a Black Source maybe or something a little different, but... Okay, we'll see. It looks like the Reactor is the deck we are against here, which is a very obnoxious deck in my opinion. <laughs> um, I don't even think it's really that good. It's just kind of an annoying one. My hope is we should be able to outpace it. Um, as long as they don't just outright kill our Cleric, we might be okay. That does allow us some life gain, so I'd like to keep it around. Okay. Uh, I think we just go for the Valkyrie. Uh, I assume they've got something they could kill the life's blood with, but it looks like they're not going to potentially. I think they would have before the life gain, uh, if I had to guess. I don't think we attack here, though. I do think we hold off. Um, this is not going to kill anything anytime soon, and if they do, it's such a big investment. It's kind of the reason I don't love Dragon Spark Reactor is, while it does not cost a lot initially, it's four mana to do it. That's kind of a lot. Um... I don't, I don't know. It just doesn't seem that great. So we're going to meat hook for two so they can kill uh, at least one of these. Which makes sense. Um, either one is bad for us, but uh, it's not actually the end of the world. It's annoying, sure, but we can actually get those back uh, long term if need be. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to. Let's go ahead and elite Spellbinder here. Get this last card out of hand uh, and slow him down a little bit. Looks like it's not going to be that helpful, but still. Uh, and then we get an attack for four. So we're kind of just trying to get out of range of more Meat Hook Massacres or the Reactor. Uh, they're not anywhere close on the Reactor, which is nice, but they are going to get there eventually. So we do have to be kind of careful there. Drana is very nice. Uh, yeah, so we definitely just play out Drana. Um, the reason Drana is so good is because we can actually bring that Valkyrie back with Drana, uh, which is kind of awesome because that's the only thing there is to bring back. So we'll see how this goes. Um, certainly they can Deadly Dispute, kill off the Elite Spellbinder here, which is annoying, but not the end of the world either. Uh, again, we're, we're heavily outpacing them on the damage route at this point. Uh, and so there's... There's very real potential we just win this upcoming turn, and I think the math works out that we do, so we'll see. Uh, but I'm not super worried. Sure. So now we don't win, but we still get very close. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and play that Lunar Veteran. Awesome. Uh, let's go ahead and throw this out. I am going to go ahead and do this. Uh, sure, they gain a life, but what we're able to do is then go get a 2-drop. Uh, which is enough to make them give up. All right. <laughs> Again, guys, two wins for the Cleric deck. Just such a smooth deck. It just it just works. It feels really good to play this one. It's been a little while. Let's jump into game three. All right, guys, here we are for game number three. Do we like this hand? 
Uh, truthfully, I don't love it, but I kind of want to try it. Uh, the double Valkyrie has me really intrigued. That's generally too slow, in my opinion, and probably will be here against a, a turn one hopeful initiate, so not great for us, but uh, we'll see what we can do. I do think we lead on the Shattered Sanctum. If we get a Plains, we can play this Voice of the Blessed and at least get something down turn two. Uh, but as it stands, this is going to be, I assume, like Boris Modified or something in that vein. Uh, and that worked out great. That was really important that we play that land uh, in the order, the lands in the order that we did. Um, and now, I mean, we do get to leave up these Agadim's Awakenings for potentially later on down the road. Okay, Brutal Cathar gonna come down and grab that Voice of the Blessed. That makes sense. That's fine. Um, Alright, so now we've got a bit of a decision to make. The choice is, of course, do we just drop Righteous Valkyrie and pass, or do we go Elite Spellbinder? I'm gonna go the Elite Spellbinder route. I would love to take a peek into their hand and see what they've got. Uh, both of these are really bad. <laughs> um, however, which is more bad? I think we take the Brutal Cathar. Uh, none of the, I mean, both of those are really terrible for us, and they're gonna get to play the, uh, well, both of them down the line, but at least we slow them down enough here, uh, or at least a little bit. They don't really have a good attack. Uh, Adeline can't, wow, they're gonna just go for it. Fair enough. Uh, okay, so we do get to block here. I am going to block this. Now, granted, they get to just kill this or uh, take this later on if they'd like, but I don't know. I, I think that that's still better, potentially. All right, so it's kind of a precarious position to be in. Um, weirdly, I think the play is just to drop two of these. Sounds really under exciting, I know, uh, but the reality is we don't want to take an any unnecessary damage. Wow, I cannot talk today. They're going to play the Brutal Cathar on the Voice of the Blessed. These can block pretty efficiently uh, because we can just play them back down later. Uh, and so I think this might just be the best option for us. Uh, so we'll block as much as we can, which is here and here. And unfortunately, that does take us down quite a bit, but we'll do the best we can here. So let's get Righteous Valkyrie down. Let's get a Luminous Phantom down. It does gain us a life, which is good. Now, again, we're still at a precarious position, but we might be able to live a turn and gain some life next turn. At least that's the hope. Uh, but this is going to be tricky. Not super confident in what we've got, but we'll see. Um... What do we need off the top? Ooh, that's bad too. Okay. So this is definitely going to block the Adelin. There's no doubt about that. Question is, what are they going to throw a counter on? Um, probably a Hopeful Initiate or the Brutal Cathar? Nah. Okay. Yeah, Brutal Cathar. Kind of interesting. I don't know because they still can attack with it, but they're not going to get a ton of... Like, I, I can freely block that. All right. They're going to attack anyway. Those training buffs are just so huge. I mean, they just deal so much. So, I think we just die, right? 8, 9, 10, 11? Yeah. Man, they just had so much power. That Boros modified, in this case, I guess Naya modified, is so strong, guys. If you have not played this deck, wow. They just had it. There's nothing uh, we could have done. That was amazing. Well done, opponent. Yeah. That was insane. That was such a good a good sequence of turns from the opponent. Just absolutely perfect. You know, it happens. Let's jump into a game four. Are we already on game four? Goodness, this is quick. Let's jump into it. All right, guys, let's hope for a little bit of a better run this time. This is an okay hand to keep. We do have our black source with that Agadim's Awakening, so we can definitely keep this. Uh, and a nice one into two, actually, so I'm pretty happy. Uh, the Cave of the Frost Dragons, we can also get down both of them in the early turns here, so... Uh, they actually do come in untapped. It looks like we could be up against a very similar style deck, but we'll see. Let's go ahead and play the voice. I'm sure they've got a vanishing verse or, you know, something along those lines, but I'm curious to know if they use it on the voice or the Lunark veteran. Um, could be either one. Or neither. Um, I do think we attack in. I don't really think. Yep, there's that vanishing verse. Definitely expected them to have that, but 
now we definitely attack in because they definitely can't have anything. Not that there's a lot they could have on two anyway, but all right. So we do have aura and a backup aura. Uh, and so I'm very interested to see how this goes. There's also an elite spellbinder, which I like a lot. Let's go ahead and throw that down. Suppose we could have attacked first, but I think we can uh, potentially get something out of hand here and slow them down a little bit, which will be nice. I do have snow covered planes. Man, another vanishing burst. Okay. Hey, use them up now. Um, wow, all of these are very, very good against us. Uh, hmm. I think it's actually the Westgate Regent, though. This is going to be a very annoying game. <laughs> um, there is no doubt about that. The farewells are brutally difficult for us to deal with because they exile. Uh, the only thing they can do this turn, it looks like, is most likely just Path of Peril. Looks like they might be leaving something up, though. They did not hit a land, which is very important. Uh, okay, well, first things first. And then I think we just go for the aura and hope for the best. I think this is all we can do. Uh, unfortunately, we've drawn three of these, which we really can't use. So now it's just a matter of can we do something a little better? Yeah. I think they take the awakening, actually. I mean, the auras are fine, but they can kill it like a lot. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the right call. Um... I'm going to throw this out just to throw something out uh, and get some extra stuff onto the field here. Deal some damage. We do gain a good bit of life here. So now if we do get a Righteous Valkyrie, uh, at the very least, it's already active, which is huge for us. Uh, they definitely just Path of Peril here, I imagine. Yeah. Um, the good news is because this died in the way that it did, we actually just get the Lunark Veteran back. So it's actually just a one, <laughs> one hit. Uh, can't quite activate that and attack so I mean pretty straightforward uh, they are very stuck on land which is super to our advantage right now more so than I think it normally would be based on the number of sweepers they have and there we go guys we got the win man that was uh that could have been so bad but that actually worked out great let's have one more game we got time let's do it all right guys here we are this is going to be our last game but uh the question is do we keep i think we do a little bit precarious uh what we may have to do is lead with this as the land uh which i don't love the idea of doing but that gives us the guaranteed two into three here in the way that we probably will want it so i think that this is the best way to do it guaranteeing that black source i think is really crucial for us looks like we are going to be against the enchantments deck which is bit of a scary one not gonna lie um but that's okay don't love that we ended up doing this now just because we of course drew a second white source but we had no way of knowing i would have rather been safe i think in that regard anyway so that's fine by me all right let's go ahead and throw that out there let's get to tabarax tabarax whatever it is out there uh and i'm not gonna attack i'm just gonna wait um the good news here is that we might be able to outlast in the sense that um, we do gain a lot of life. So obviously we're going to have that going for us, but they definitely are going to be able to do quite a bit here. So, uh, interesting. So I'm going to do this. Hmm. I'm going to pass. Uh, oh, I should have attacked there, but that's okay. I'm going to pass. Let's see what they do. We've got the Vanishing Verse that can deal with this Kami, uh, which I think is potentially going to be really good. Yep. Can't do anything about that. They get it. Wow. All these are quite good. Um, so my hope is they play this... Uh, All right, let's go ahead and throw that there. Exiling that is also very important because uh, this does actually return itself from the graveyard. So it's something we kind of have to get out of there at some point. Um, I 
actually do think I do this. They only get to kill one thing, uh, which is pretty important for us here, and we can bring that thing back later. So I think this works out okay. It's not great, but definitely uh, kind of prevents them from being able to do quite as much in a turn, if that makes sense. Uh, that's also a big enabler for this Naya deck and that they can play those runes for free if they get the Runeforge champion out. Which I would love for them not to be able to do. <laughs> uh, and so I would much rather them not have that option uh, down the road here. Okay. Uh, well, this is kind of an interesting place to be. We can do quite a bit. So first things first, I am going to attack with both. Okay. So that's going to gain a counter. Now what we get to do is sack Aura. That's going to bring back Abarax. But now we get Drana, and we also get this. That seems very good. Um, now, they could have an explosive turn here as well, but I think that this is just the best thing we could have done. Um, it sets us up extraordinarily well for future turns. So, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, there's the Runeforge champion, though. That is a bit scary, uh, just because now they can play runes for one. If they get the little naturalist, they can play them for free. So let's hope they don't have that. Okay. Uh, put one more creature on target creature you control. Okay. So they're really going to be buffing this up. Uh, which makes sense. That's fine. It's really powerful, and it has lifelink, which is, like, terrible for us. But... It's cool. Everything's fine. <laughs> uh, all right, so we could double block. Um, I don't love that, though. Uh, I think I'd take five. Really considering a lot of options there, but I just think that's probably the best one. Um, now here, before we attack, we can do some interesting shenanigans if we would like. Um, I think I will do it. So let's do this. I'm going to get a Righteous Valkyrie. I'd love to draw the card. That'd be kind of cool. Oh, that's very good as well. Um, all right. So let's get that Righteous Valkyrie. Uh, let's... I guess it doesn't super matter the order here let's do this I don't think it really matters that much but let's do this okay um then we can attack here and here pretty much freely so let's do that uh we also get the voice of the blessed out uh and it does come in with a counter on it um, and it gains us life, <laughs> which is the goal. Um, and we get a huge attack buff. So now I think we are solidified here, but that was definitely, I think the best thing we could have done. I don't, I don't think we could have played that any better. Just kind of have to hope we can finish this one off. I mean, we've got quite a lot of life now to play with and very, very powerful threats that do outpower their threats. So here's to hoping. I really love Orzhov Clerics, guys. This is one of those decks that just feels resilient. It's felt really good since the beginning uh, when it was first viable. It's always felt like it was maybe not tier one. I get it, but it's always felt good to play. Uh, and this is why. I mean, you're seeing the recursive aspect of this really, really pop off. But not only that, it's just so resilient. I mean, you kill stuff and yeah, it sucks, but like get stuff back. It kind of doesn't matter. And so uh, it's it just feels right it just feels good uh highly encourage everybody to try this deck if at least once if you have not already super super worth it the fact that this has lifelink and trample in particular trample is a bit of a problem for us but we'll see what we can do they are just trying to set it up to where they're gaining enough life and negating our uh, attack boost here from the Righteous Valkyrie, which, hey, makes sense. I get it. All right, so this is just a 6-6, six, six, um, which is important. We could just take all of it. Uh, we are then down well below what we need to be at, though. Alternatively, 
can block here. Hmm. Trying to make sure we do this in the correct uh, way is very important. Honestly, we could just like go really crazy here, but. Whoa, 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 whoa. Nope, not what I meant. I'm gonna do that. We'll see if this works out. I really don't know. Um, they get to kill one thing here and that's kind of okay. Two things, excuse me. Did they have death touch? Oh, that's fine. It doesn't really matter. We get stuff back here, which is nice. So, uh, yep. Take that. Take that. Take that. Perfect. So now we've got answers to basically whatever we need to answer. <laughs> um, all right. Let's drop Valkyrie. Gonna gain us a good bit of life here. Um, can't do both. That's a little sad, but I do think we just go ahead and exile this. It gets rid of these runes also, which is pretty important. Um, I'm gonna do this. I think this is correct. Yes. Okay. Oh, another voice of the blessed. Well, that's pretty good. Um, and I'm actually just gonna do this. Okay. So then this attacks in, this attacks in, and this attacks in. Uh, yeah. I think this is just correct. That comes into play. We gain a bunch more life, and there we get a massive attack in. We're <laughs> we got him down to one, and we're up to now 44. So again, I think we're okay, but uh, they definitely had us on that last turn. That was a bit of a tricky turn, but I think uh, I think at this point we're pretty solidified. Um, sure, they get a lot of good stuff, but we just have more stuff. I think it's fine. Um, yep. Yep. All these are good, uh, but again, we just get to attack in with flying. <laughs> All right. There we go. We did it, guys. That was awesome. That was a very good run. We only lost, I think, one game. Uh, that was awesome, guys. Let's talk about this deck. All right, everybody. So as you know, Orzhov Clerics has been a deck that, as I said, has been around for a while and is just good. Uh, we've seen it around since, I think, Zendikar Rising Days, as I mentioned. And it, since then, it's just always kind of done what it's supposed to do. And yeah, you can have a bad draw. Yeah, you can have a bad matchup. But it's so resilient, so aggressive, and it has that life gain aspect as well. So it's just a beautiful little combination of everything that you need in a nice mid-range, you know, aggressive-ish deck. Uh, it works great, uh, and I still encourage you to try it. I, I, There's no real downside to this deck, in my opinion. Certainly, there are a lot of things that can deal with these style decks. Uh, we saw in the in the matchup where we uh kind of unfortunately for the opponent they got mana screwed but they had tons of sweepers um you're gonna struggle against those decks naturally the good thing is you have options uh you've got agadim's awakening to bring stuff back you've got drana to bring stuff back you have aura that can bring stuff back like you just have options uh and again it's not a perfect deck but it is a very very good one so go ahead guys try this one out if you haven't already if you haven't i'm a little surprised but if you have go back to it. It's a fun one just to play. Uh, but guys, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this. Make sure you enter the giveaway. Stay tuned because we will have another collection update here on Saturday. It's going to be a great time. Thank you guys so much for enjoying not only our channel, but the series and everything there. We, we really appreciate it. But I love you guys so much. I'll see you later.